Hi, welcome back to my vlog. This is the fourth edition of my vlog. Now, in this uh, edition, I want to get more into detail about how we can develop a Max MSP patch that will uh, make us able to teach the computer uh, how to play music in a specific style. Uh, we're going to start by looking at an existing uh, user interface which has been developed by a guy called Samuel um, and we're going to check out some of the things that we can learn from that patch and we're also going to dig very much further into that and specifically we're going to uh, work with a very complex and complicated part of translating from a live stream of musical data into a meaningful um, machine learning process, which is rhythm. So we're going to check out what are the problems with uh, teaching the computer about rhythm. So this um, VLOG, I think, is interesting for people who are working with electroacoustic musical production, composition, uh, machine learning, and uh, improvisation. Um, and maybe also art in general. So I hope you enjoy it and um, let's get started. Hi, check this out. So what we're trying to do now is to teach the computer to play music in this kind of style. And um, we are try to, we're trying to use machine learning to teach the computer these things. And um, I have uh, inspira I've got inspiration from this um, a guy called Samuel Pierce Davis who has uh, built a uh, Max MSP patch where it uh, helps you use these Markov uh, models to uh, learn from a given musical style. So let, let's have a look at the, the, the machine he has built. I'm not going to go into details because you can check out his YouTube to see how it works in detail. But anyway, this is what I want you to see from this. I'm learning from it and I'm trying to refurbish it to match my um, own um, uh, needs. All right, so here we have it. And I'm just going to show you shortly uh, how it can work. Um, the way it can work is you can uh, teach it from a given musical piece. And I'm going to use a uh, piece by Debussy. Uh, called Claire de Lune, and this is also the example that uh, Samuel gives. I have loaded the MIDI into this uh, model. Let's reset it. And then uh, it's going to be train, training from pitch, velocity, chords, onset, and note, note lengths. And um, Samuel has used a, f a feature where he plays the MIDI file in a very f fast way, and then in this way the computer will work faster, right? So it's going to sound like this. Okay, that was the piece and then we're going to push build. And what is happening now is that it will take some time for the, um, for Max MSP to uh, to train all these Markov objects with all this input that has been fed into them. And of course, it's also a total musical piece that has been uh, fed into the model in at one time, right? So it requires some CPU to process all that. Now, in my case, I'm not going to work with all a, a big chunk of music, which is going to be fed into the objects. I'm going to work with a live stream of um, musical information which is going to 
be taught to the machine. But anyway, let's uh, listen to how it sounds when uh, this um, model has learned how to play in the style of Debussy, presumably. We're going to press this one. And so on. This will go on forever. There's no way to stop. Well, you can just press stop. But anyway, that's the idea that it's a generative uh, way to use the computer. It, is been, it has been trained in the style of Debussy and now it will just generate um, music that sounds that way. Now, we have a couple of problems here. One problem is that the information being fed into this model is divided into five uh, parameters in this case and they are each one being fed into a Markov object. Right? So the computer will generate pitch according to what it has been fed with pitches. It will generate uh, velocity according to what it has been fed. Now what is going on is that these two parameters are running in each their track. So the one Marco model doesn't know what the other is going to do. So we have this thing that sometimes or in most cases in music things are related, right? So you would have maybe a sharp accent in one part of um, the soundscape. This accentuated note would be fed into one Markov object and it will know that from each... Uh, there is a percentage of by which these sharp uh, accents will occur but it wouldn't know that it's related to these higher pitches. Whereas the low pitches are not being accentuated. So what the Marco, what this object will do is maybe to look like this. So there's a musical idea in having these sharp uh, accents on the higher notes, whereas the lower notes are more legato and more soft and subdued, right? So this is a thing that we have to find a way to deal with, okay? Anyway, there are a few things to remake in this uh, particular uh, machine that Samuel Pierce Davis has made and I want to thank him for his work. It has been helpful. But now we're going to move on to take a more sharp look at the uh, details in the Marco model when it comes to uh, generating more complex music. Okay, please don't despair. I have a patch here where I have been doing some research on how uh, it works when you are feeding uh, some data into uh, independent uh, Markov objects. And the, what, what I've been trying to do is to feed the same data into two objects. And I've asked myself what will happen if you have two streams of data that are being fed, or one stream of data that is being fed into two objects where it should be the same analysis that they will do, right? And then afterwards asking, when you output this data, what are the chances that you will output the same thing in each of these two? This goes against the purpose, of course, of the Markle model, which is to spit out the probable, the most probable um, piece of data that would come after a given piece of data. 
Now, if you have two models, they wouldn't output the same each time because it's like throwing a dice, right? So if you have a 33% chance of having a, I don't know, number five after number four, well, 33% of the times it will do that. And then 66% of the times it will throw out, let's say a, a seven or something like that. So actually the Markle model is not made for this, but I've asked what are the chances that you will spit out the same piece of data in two objects. And um, the thing is that you can actually ask this uh, model to have a first, second, third, or fourth order, and so on. In this case, you will have a, you will train the model to know uh, if you have two, uh, in two data pieces, two numbers that will come follow each other, and then what will the third one be, uh, and so on. So if you have a higher order, uh, it should generate a more predictable outcome. And what this shows is that uh, if you have an order of one, the chances, the percentages, the chances of having a same number coming out is 21, and then a different number is 38. So you have a larger percentage of different numbers coming out uh, than same numbers. And this goes uh, all the way through, except from here, right? And if you have in an order of two, there's a kind of the same image, right? In some cases, you have, well, mostly you have a different number every time. So um, basically what this tells us is that combining two Markov objects, you will lose the connection between the two different streams of data. That's my point. Um, but it seems that an order of two would generate a higher number uh, of um, of uh, s same numbers that comes out, but it's not really sure. So anyway, my point is, this is not a very scientific way to move forward. So what can we do instead? Um, this is what we're going to try try to find out now. Okay, so one of the issues that Samuel Pierce Davis will encounter in his uh, proceeding is that once he uses a MIDI file which has a much more live uh, way of performing uh, in the time domain, doesn't work well when it comes to following onsets and durations. And um, what I've noticed is that in the patch that he has built, the way that he is translating uh, duration information into the machine uh, is very complex. Now I'm going to show you what I mean. Good. So here we have the interface and what we need to do is to go behind the scenes and take a look what's inside this black box in order to find out how uh, the model, how this is training the model to understand rhythm. Okay, and the way we're going to do that is to take, put a little, you might say, spy object into this patch. This is the entrails of our patch. And uh, let's have a look at what's going on once we try to find out what is being fed into the Marco model that is trained for durations, right? This is the, uh, this is what comes from the MIDI. It uh, will find out the length of the MIDI and it is going to do some stuff here. And this is uh, where we're going to print uh, the numbers that are coming in and we're going to have them in this max console over here. Let's take a look at what's happening when we play. And now we're going to play some Bach. Let's play it and watch what's happening over here. One, two, three. Okay, 
as you can already see, we have a lot of numbers out here. And what's going on is because we have a MIDI file which has been created in a machine, where it's not a human being playing this, you have a lot of repetitions. You have 12, 2, 2, 0, 12, 2, 2, 0. And this is a duration that will repeat itself over time, right? You have 8, 8, 2, 2, 0, which is a doubling up or something on the other edge. So this is what a machine would be doing when playing the music. The thing is that once you have a human being playing this, well, these, let's say these three numbers here, you would have maybe something slightly smaller or larger. The thing is that the Marco model will read this. These three numbers are the same. So it will say, well, you have the same value. If you have a human being playing this, these would be three different uh, values. Now, I would like to check out what's inside the Markov model that has been, uh, the Markov object that has been built here. And this would be by saying dump and then outputting what's dumped. The thing is that I know, well, I can try it now and see what happens, that once I do that, it's going to create a problem because So what are we going to do about that? So as I've been talking about in a previous video, we need to simplify the data. We need simply to take less data to put into the uh, computer. And what we need to do is to work with uh, proportions of rhythm, right? In my case, at least, this is how my music works and probably most other music, is that you have a, a, a beat going on and then you have some subdivisions. You divide the beat into numbers, right? And we need to find a way to input some simplified ideas about what the rhythm is. And this is why I've, uh, I want to make a kind of quantification of uh, subdivisions. And I've been working on a model where I take, uh, I want to have 14 or 18, I think, um, different values that are talking about the proportion between pulse, which is like a pulse, for example, uh, 60 beat per minute, and a rhythm. So here you have the pulse and then you have some rhythmic events going on right you have the pulse here and then you have rhythm something like that so you want to take a pulse which is a duration here milliseconds let's say 1000 milliseconds and you want to take the rhythm which is like for example 749 milliseconds right now you want to take the proportion between these two so you want to find out what is the um, kind of uh, value that this um, rhythmic uh, event has. And that would be a, um, this kind of note, if you note it. But as you see, this is not for 750, which would have been three thirds of our 1000. It is a different kind of number because we humans, we are not machines. So we would play it differently. We would play it slightly off. And this is where we need to use the computer to uh, make a, some, do some maths. And let's have a look at that. Okay, so we've established that human beings are not machines. So if we have a steady beat going on, done by a human, what the computer will hear are totally different numbers. For each beat, they will hear a different number because we are not as precise as a machine, which is also what makes the music interesting. So in order to translate what's going on in music played by humans into what the computer will understand, we need to feed it with some numbers. And as you've seen in my former videos, the Markov model works well when you have Quanti quantify the events or what you want to analyze into uh, not too many um, numbers. And this is why I've chosen to divide 
um, our um, musical, um, our rhythmic events into now only 14 uh, different events. And the way I've done it is by saying what's important in music, or at least in my kind of music, and I would also argue in 99% of most music that we're listening to, the at the level of durations, at the time uh, aspect of music, what's important is not the absolute duration of a given um, musical event, what we call rhythm. What's important is the proportion between the onset, the rhythmical event, and the beat of the music. So we'd have a beat, and then we'd have some onsets. So the beat would be like, dum, 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 dum. And then we'd have some rhythmical events. And this would be what's important. So I want to make this comprehensible to the computer. And I want to do it in this way. So this is why I have made this uh, graphics here. And um, as you can see, there are, well, there's only 13 actual different uh, values, uh, lo note lengths or proportions that we want the computer to understand. As you can see here, I've decided to, to give you an example in 60 beats per minute, which would mean that a quarter note has a duration of 1000 millisecond or one second. Now, um, these are all proportions, and I've chosen to say that we should divide every beat into 12 steps. But instead of saying, and, and then I'd say, well, if you have four beats, would be, which would be a standard measure in music, like four fourth, then you would have a 12 times four division, which is 48 divisions. Instead of saying then, that we should divide all these steps into equal distant uh, small chunks and then just say we have 48 values. In order to make it musically relevant, we're doing some kind of fractal movement here so that the shorter uh, notes or values, they should be more distinguished and then the longer ones should be less. So as you can see here, for example, we have uh, 48 twelfths, right? Which is this kind of note. And we could also say we have 47 twelfths, which would be slightly shorter. But at a perceptual level, this wouldn't make sense at all, because this is too small a difference with a very long duration. So perceptually, we wouldn't be able to make the difference. So what I've decided to say is the shorter the note or the duration, the more we distinguish, right? So we start by saying we have a sixth of a note, which is this kind of note. And um, the next one is a fourth of a note, which is a, this kind of note, a sixteenth note. And as you can see with the durations in 60 beats per minute, they are quite close to each other, right? And then they become longer and longer in distance. And it's a fractal logic here because we have this note here, which is the same. Then we have this one, which is the same. And then we have the proportions in each of these lines. They are uh, uh, the same logic. But then we combine these two logics. And this is giving us a special kind of um, um, mathematical problem that I will come back to. I will show you what's what I've made out of this. All right. So this is in Maximus P, and I've decided to say when you have the proportion of 0 0.17, which corresponds to a one-sixth of a beat, um, we give it the value 1. Now we have 0 0.25, which is a, a 16th, note, 16th note, which we give the value of 2. And we have a third of a note, and a half note, and so on and so forth. Right, so these are the proportions between rhythm and beat. 
and these are the uh, you know the, the the index number you might say I'm giving it so we have 1 to 13 different numbers and I've plotted this into a geographer 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 whatever and <laughs> this is the curve that we'll get now um, as you can see I've asked it to make a regression model and I've asked it to do it in different ways and I found out that the polynomial way was the best one which is most approximating how the curve works this might be it might I hope that there are some math uh, experts out there that might help me getting this even better but it seems to be working which is the important thing so we have this formula here and I've taken that formula and just put it into max MSP in this object called expert now here what will enter into this is a an ongoing uh, onset uh, duration uh, input and that will be rounded and split and so on oh we need to split it into only 13 I can see there there's a mistake let's check this out so here should be 13 and not 14 because we only have 13 different index values so this is at the level of you have a proportion between beat and uh, rhythm and that proportion is being put into this algorithm and then it will spit out either of these uh, 13 numbers 1 to 13 and that's what the computer should learn from this is what we're going to feed into the Marco model instead of having you know whatever number coming in just the the sheer dimension of what we could come up with different kinds of values that we would feed into the Marco model we are just limiting this to 13 uh, different values which are proportions and then we can translate it into different kinds of tempos right afterwards we can play it short uh, faster uh, or, or slower and that will generate uh, a music which is musically significant it makes sense to a human listener uh, but what's important is the proportions now next um, thing we're going to talk about now is about how can we uh, use max MSP to um, translate uh, an incoming stream of musical events into these proportions and uh, let's have a look at that now all right I want to show you this match max patch that I've uh, made which is um, basically a um, MIDI input which in my case I'm going to take from my piano uh, and I have two different kinds of inputs one which is a control input and I've routed this to a pedal on the piano uh, and this is a, an acoustic piano which has been uh, I can show you now well anyway I have a pedal down here which I will just as you can see here input a beat here it comes right and then I have rhythm and these things are all being fed into not a Marco uh, object as of yet because I want to know what's going on so I'm feeding it into a collection uh, input here or a object and when once it's in there I can just play these um, what I've input into it so what we're going to do is to start by lay, lay, making some kind of count in like the when you have the beat you want to establish it's going like this dam, 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 and then some rhythm And then we can play what we just uh, made and this is a work in progress you might say so let's hear about it
So this is how far I've come so far. And if we want to have a closer look, we can take a look inside this, which are the rhythms that are being fed. Now these are the proportions that have been translated into each of these index numbers. As you can see, the first note is rather has a long duration, which is probably not the case. So I need to adjust something there. And then you can see the rest of the notes, they are quite different, all right, from each other. And then uh, what this is being output, and then I have here a translation from, if you have a one, this is a this proportion. So we go back from the index number and then to spit out the proportions. And these proportions are being combined with the current beat per minute, uh, and so on. And here we have the melody, which are just uh, MIDI notes that are being fed into the computer. So uh, as of now, this is how far I've come. Um, and I need to adjust some stuff to make it work in a way where I can just play, you know, a, a song you might know about, and then it would repeat the same thing. Uh, we can make a test to see how far we've come here. Just wait a sec. Let's take a song you might know. One, two, three, four. Yeah, you know that one. And then let's check out how this sounds. And we, here we go. Okay, as you can see, we have a second note, which is very, very long, 13. Something has gone wrong here, but these are the adjustments that we have to make in order to make this uh, work. But as you also can see, everything we're doing here is um, basically trying to translate something completely um, fluffy, which is a human performance into something which is um, a computer language. So this is this is the issue. These are the the challenges that we are facing right now. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Um, and I think that might there might be people out there who are actually uh, better than I in math. And maybe you can see some of the things that I might change in order to make this work better. But this is a vlog, so it's documenting a process, which is an ongoing thing. And um, I hope it makes sense for you. So please uh, comment and, 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 and contact me if you have any feedback or so on. So thanks a lot. Bye.